Growing up, I often heard the phrase garbage in, garbage out. As I'm sure you must have too. You see, my dad used this otherwise computer slang to explain to me the correlation between input and output, cause and effect. I would therefore like to take a similar approach in explaining why you are what you eat. Hello everybody, my name is Rose Love and welcome to episode one of Affairs of the Heart. Ever wondered why you're so tired all the time? Or why your energy runs out at doing the most simple of tasks? Or why your brain gets foggy and you can't seem to focus every now and then? Well, it might be time for you to reevaluate your eating patterns. But before we dive into all things food and digestion, I'd like us to highlight a very common theory that is used to explain what man is. We see, man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he's housed in a body. Now, I personally believe that your spirit, man, is your eternal you. It is the you that existed the you that exists currently, and the you that will continue to exist even after death. Then I believe that the soul man or the soul uh, part of who you are is an interpretation of what is going on and what is influencing your spirit. And that in turn forms your emotions, it forms your experience of life in your mind, your willpower, your decision making, and that or whatever that is that's going on in your soul is then translated in your body by how you live your life. For example, I can tell what you think of yourself based on how you dress because it's an expression of what you you are, what's going on in your mind, right? It's an expression of how you feel. If I'm feeling good, I'm gonna wear a nice white shirt, okay? And for example, if you make bad decisions in your bodily self, it is just a direct example or a direct show of what is going on in your soul in the soul that is why it is important for you to know that the word of god is planted in your spirit but you have to live out the word of god and how do you do that you are transformed in your mind in your thinking in the renewal of the patterns that you live after or that you fashion your life after as it pertains to the food we eat your it i would categorize the effect that it has on us in two ways Number one, food affects our brain. Number two, food affects um, our body through our brain and our body respectively. Now I'm going to explain that in just a bit. The way that food affects your brain is the way we've been taught all throughout high school, biology class. Shout out to my biology teacher. I had the best teachers, by the way. I was like that kid who got along with my teachers. And so if you study biology, then you know that um, the food that we consume and digest is broken down and it offers us energy. It affects our moods. It um, affects uh, our neurotransmitters. It affects so many things, our movement, and so on and so forth. And that is just how food affects your brain. For example, um, if you are having the wrong intake of glucose. Um, Maybe let's say you take in a lot of white bread. You'll notice that you have a high surge in blood sugar and it is a quick high. And then it is followed by a dip in so many ways that affect your emotions, that affect your mood and your attention span. Whereas if you eat healthy carbohydrates like oats, Um, then you have a slower, more gradual rise in your blood sugar, which is sustained for a longer period of time. It's highly important that you educate yourself on how the food you eat affects your brain. And um, from that, you're able to form, you know, like a diet or a nutrition plan or something that you can kind of strictly follow. The other side of this is how food affects your physical body. We see it in the way you look. For example, your skin. Your skin may not be the only um, example of how food affects your brain, but it is part of it. We see it in the fluctuation in your weight gain. Um, we see it in how much you eat. We see it in how you, your body is expressing what is going on in your stomach, okay? And your body is expressing what your brain is transmitting to it, okay? The most important thing about how to regulate the state of your heart through food is, of course, nutrition, diet, but also exercise. 
exercise coupled with good nutrition, research shows that one, you're probably going to live longer. Two, you are able to combat um, detrimental mental health diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia, and you tend to have a more fuller experience of life. Why is that important to um, the way your heart is and your, the state of your heart? Because man is spirit and has a soul and has a body and, and is housed in a body, it is important that you take care of your body because whatsoever is going on in your spirit man, in your heart, whatsoever is going on in your soul is going to be interpreted. We're going to see it in the way your body carries out the day to day. So I think it is most important to master your body. As you master your spirit, as you master what you are ingesting, as you master what it is you're listening to, what it is that you're watching, if your body is not able to house it, it be ineffective, okay? So master your body, master the energy that you carry within your body, and be prudent in the way that you live out your calling, that you live out the doctrine that is implanted in your spirit. For example, if you are called or commissioned to be a musician, or commissioned to be an evangelist, for example, and that is your calling in life, that is how you're going to touch lives, you're going to spread the gospel, or you're just going to live out your purpose. There's absolutely no way you're going to be able to hold concerts back to back to back to back all throughout the year if your body is not in shape. Okay, you might have the best voice, you might have the best speaking notes, but your body needs to be able to house everything that is going on in your spirit, everything that is going on in your soul. It seems like the easiest component um, to master, but it really is the hardest and most neglected one. So it is important that you master your body. 30 minutes a day is what uh, scientists prescribe. 30 minutes a day of exercise coupled with good nutrition that alone can help you deal with um, mental illnesses, like I said, dementia and Alzheimer's. It can kind of delay the onset of these things. Yeah, for, for us to see the state of your heart, for you to live out the true state of your heart that is healthy, you must live a healthy life in the bodily form. As this series goes on, I'm going to dive deeper into what comprises the soul, what comprises the spirit, how all these things are interlinked. Like I've just come, come from explaining how your body is the most outward, most physical, most obvious expression of what's going on in your spirit, what's going on in your soul, and that is why I chose to start with this component first. Throughout the series, as we learn, um, um, how what you say, what you do, all these things as we learn about how they affect the state of your heart. We are also, surprise, surprise, gonna dive deeper into what makes man and um, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you like, that you comment, and that you subscribe and share this video and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!